Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. This is my quarter three journals update. So what I've been doing this year in 2018 is giving you an update every quarter, one on my journaling and one on my planning. So that is going to be under my updates playlist and every quarter there will be a journaling update video there and a planning update video there. People um, seem to find that helpful since they're always asking me if I'm still journaling in a certain thing or you know how I'm planning right now. And so I hope that these update videos are helpful for you guys to be able to go and check in there. All right, so quarter three, we are in August right now of 2018. And I am still in most of the books that I started the year in and some new. So let's go through this from, let's start with probably my favorite journal right now. My favorite journal is Some Lines a Day. It is by Leuchtturm. It's called the Some Lines a Day Five-Year Memory Book. It is available on Amazon. Sometimes the Amazon price is higher than even the Leuchtturm site. And many other sites sell it also. So you just need to check in really with the Amazon price and the Leuchtturm site and other sites and see which one is running the better price at the time that you want to buy it. This absolutely has become my favorite journal from that I've ever journaled in, you guys. I love this. I started it January 1 and I just printed um, one of my favorite Mary Inglebright pictures. I just found it online on my, I printed this off on my Polaroid Zip little printer. I stuck it in there because I thought it's one of my favorite things to look at to start the new year. It says, and now let us welcome the new year full of things that have never been. And I always love to think about that at the beginning of the new year. Some lines a day, what I'm doing every day, I'm going to rotate the colors. So like 2018 will be black and then blue, black, blue, black. So it's just easy to dif differentiate the years. Every single page has a date assigned to it, but no year. January 1, 2, 3, and then the year you fill in. And there's actually no place to fill in the day of the week, but I started filling in the day of the week before the year because I just like to know what day of the week it was. And I've also filled in the temperatures, the high and then the low. And I thought if I put that every year, it would be really interesting because certain times of year, Texas definitely has huge fluctuations in temperature. Um, not for the summertime, but most of the rest of the year, I mean, it could be 20 to 30 degree fluctuation on the same day. So I thought that would be interesting to see looking back. So I put my little temperature and then I just write a little thing that happened that day. And I love this because... By the time my last year in this five-year journal, my son will be graduating that year in the fifth year. And so big changes will be happening in our family. My oldest son will be graduating that fifth year. So that's why I was like, I have to start it this year. Now I've never kept a five-year journal before. This is my first one, but I can already tell I'm definitely gonna keep this up and it might even be something I wanna keep up beyond this first five year. I might even wanna do a second five-year journal. Like I said, it's been the easiest journal I've ever kept and the most fun because I feel like every year I get to go back and write in here, I get to read what happened on that day the year before. And I just think that's gonna bring me so much joy and I've never done anything like this before. So I absolutely love it. You guys, I don't miss a day because I could not remember what happens on a day if my life depended on it. I have missed maybe three days, but I go and write it in right the very next day, like even in the morning. So I usually write it up every night. And like I said, I've only missed like three days and I've written it up the very next morning because if I miss a day, I just won't remember. And I write that temperature on there for my phone and that's it. That's going to be this book. I love how simple it is. And I have just, this has been a joy to keep up. Here's what a blank page looks like. So it just has the year 20. And it has the date at the top. Um, I love Leuchtturm paper, even though there is some ghosting with Leuchtturm because that is just the nature of their paper. But there is never any bleed through and their paper can take all kinds of pens. And it is like an archive quality paper. 
It is a really nice journaling paper to write on. And you can see how when you get writing on the front and the back, it really doesn't matter what was on the other side because you can't really see it then. You're writing on the very same side. This is definitely a, my favorite journal. And I've done something kind of crazy back here. I kind of just get like favorite stamps that I love and I kind of just want to commemorate them and I thought well since I'm keeping this journal for five years this would be fun so I'm just writing how much a forever cent cost in 2018 and the stamps that I got that I liked in 2018 and then you know each year I will add some in and if I have to go over here or on the back there so I just thought it was a fun place to keep them like in 50 years if my kids are ever reading through this book that might be something fun to see I just think this journal is going to mean the most to my family in 50 years or mean the most to me personally um, in my old age. So I'm really, I love this journal. I will be keeping this up next year. Now, my passion planner, I got this as a Christmas gift, this hard bound one from passion planner for getting referrals to them. This is what they gave um, out to some people for a gift for getting referrals. And I have a whole video about this, getting this. If I can remember to link it below, I will. I, ha I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to plan in this because I just, I can't plan in a compact passion planner. When I did my passion planner planning last year, and I have many videos on that, I have a whole passion planner playlist that was done in the classic size. So I knew I wasn't going to plan in a compact but I wanted to use this in some way because I just thought that this gift was just a really cool thing and kind of commemorated my first year doing this channel. And I really wanted to, I wanted to keep this book and use it in some way. So I, I cut out one of my favorite Mary Englebright pictures from her uh, day, um, her day by day calendar. I know it's not called that, a page a day calendar. And I put the Passion Planner sticker in here. And I'm not going to go through the Passion Planner because I have full videos on my Passion Planner playlist about that. But at first, I started using the monthly. I was really good. I kept track of everything in the monthly, too, just for fun. I tried out temperatures. Then I just tried out major events. Um, and you will see, I'm just going to flip through it. So I'm just using this as another journal and putting the temperature up here. And I just put, like, things we did that week, things that got done this week, what videos I filmed that week big things that happened that week. And so I just thought it was a fun way. And then I changed the color every single month. So I kind of kept up with the monthly in February and every single month I changed the color. That week was probably my most sparse week in here. I filled out the monthly reflection at first, but then I stopped because I just don't like to force anything. If I'm not feeling like it's adding to my life, I just don't want to do it because I am you know, already planning in my planners. I'm doing other journaling and I just didn't want to force it. So here's the March monthly. It got a little bit filled out. March was green and got, you know, a little bit messier. And this green pen is a Sharpie uh, pen. And I don't love the way that it just turns out looking. This was a Sharpie pen, the red one. This was a flare pen. So I went back to using flares because I like the way that they turned out better. But March was green. April is purple. And I wrote some of my days going horizontal because it's just easier to write, you know, things that happened horizontally. And then I also started adding in for my page a day, Mary Englebright calendar pictures in here. And I just thought it added something to my journaling. So I started adding those pictures and I started writing horizontally a lot and always the temperature up top there. So I really like what the pictures add in there. And I did like writing horizontally, but then I ended up going back to vertically. So who knows, but um, May is a fuchsia or magenta, and I did fill in my May. Hmm, I don't think I did my June. So here's my May. I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like, and I was writing mainly horizontally then. June is back to a green flare pen. June was some horizontal, some vertical. I can see it's a mix. And then July, I did a blue and red flare pens. And I went back to mainly Hora's vertical. And then I also have the page a day Gretchen Rubin Happier calendar. And I put some of my favorite ones in here also there. But mainly pictures from the Marion Colbright page a day that kind of go with the season. Like these are summer pictures. 
we're in the middle of July. And then my August color is green, and we're just in the beginning of August right now, and I'm actually a day behind. So I need to journal, and I never get more than a day behind in this book either, or I won't remember what's going to happen. Sometimes I look to the week ahead and I write the temps in for the week ahead, you know, because they usually give you the seven day on your phone. And then I write any big events that I know are happening the week ahead. And I do put in pictures ahead of time from my Mary Ankle Bright page day. So I hope to keep this up through the end of this year. I don't plan on doing this again next year, even if I um, earn some. I don't know if they'll send out any planner this year. I haven't gotten nearly as many referrals this year. Um, but that's where if you buy a passion planner, if you put my email in the referral box at checkout, then I can earn, um, free undated planners to do giveaways with, but I can also, I guess, earn a really cool planner at the end of the year that's dated. Uh, they actually sent me two of these and I got to do a giveaway for one. So that was really, really fun. But I don't plan on keeping up this same journal next year because that would just, it would feel taxing to me. But this year I want to finish this one. I think it's a fun, cool keepsake um, because it also marks like all the work I did with Passion Planner my first year on my channel. Something I just recently started was this um, Erin Condren Perpetual Calendar. I don't know if I will keep this up, but you know, I just like experimenting with different things, you guys. <laughs> So what this is, is I just started it in June and I just write basically one big thing that happened that day. The big thing that stands out to me or something that I want to remember. That's it. That is it. So I can kind of look over my month and wow, boom, the big things all stand out. So I did June and July. I only missed one day in July and now we're into August. We will see if I keep it up. I'm not sure about this. If it's something I'm going to look back on, if it's something that's going to, going to bring me joy I'm not sure. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this up. This one is up in the air. And in case I have not, sh um, well, I have shown this. I have this Vera Bradley makeup bag. It is her large one. And I will try to link it down below in the description. And it just randomly works perfectly to hold all my journals by my bed. So I didn't stick the some lines a day back in here, but the some lines a day, it fits perfectly the way this accordion opens up. The pens I'm using right then fit right in here in the little mesh pockets. And then all my journals fit right in here. Then they zip up and it's just right next to my bed. So it's easy for me to grab every night and journal in my bed. And also this side kind of holds my more personal journals. It's just a flat side. This is my just really personal journal that I just write in whenever it hits, whenever the need hits. <laughs> So there's no rhyme or reason to this one. It doesn't get written in that often, I'll be honest, since all my other journaling, but any deep personal journaling gets done in here. This is an Inkwell Press sewn journal. And then I also really like the Ashley Shelley, the Daily Peace Journal. And what that is, is it's just kind of gives you prompts and it's four days per page. And just some days, I don't like to make myself do this every day. But when I've had a randomly really good day, I like to go fill it in in this daily peace journal to remember it. So those two stay in the flat side. And like I said, I will link this Vera Bradley bag down below. It was just always sitting in my closet. We don't travel that much. And honestly, I have other bags I can use. If I needed to take my stuff out of here, I could. And it just works perfectly for a portable journal bag and also sometimes if I want to write at my desk instead of in my bed I can just pick it up and it all comes with me okay you guys if you have been following me you know that I have this 18 month Erin Condren photo journal so it started in June 2017 so I hit 12 months in June of 2018 and you know what I decided when I hit 12 months in this that I was not going to photo journal anymore because it was feeling very taxing with everything else I was doing. I love this photo journal, but to me, the Polaroid Zip app, which is what I use to print these pictures, and I will link those videos down below in the description where I show the Polaroid Zip printer and I talk all about how I do it. And there are some videos with my sister on that too, but it just, I was like, okay, one year, I wish I would have just bought this for one year and not 18 months because it was a lot for me. And I just, so I ended it at a year 
which was at the end of June right here. But I will kind of flip through and show you. I would fill in big events on the monthlies. I would do monthly recaps here. And I do love and have the photos in here with my handwriting. But the Polaroid Zip isn't the best at picture quality, in my opinion. But I do love having the pictures with my own handwriting. And I do chat books, as you guys all know, print them from my Instagram line, uh, from my Instagram series. And if you want to know what chat books are, I have a link to a video I've done down in my description box also, and you can get your first chat books free. So I just didn't feel the need for the, to continue this photo journal past a year. It was a fun thing to do for this year, and I love the way it turned out. Uh, it was just, it became feeling taxing. And so I needed a break from it, basically. Looking back through it makes me sad that I'm not finishing the 18 months in it. But, you know, sometimes we just have to accept where we are in our life. And I know all these pictures actually are getting printed in my chat books. So that does not make me sad at all. But it is nice to have personal handwriting rather than typed up in the chat books. I don't think that my boys will grow up and ever treasure these books, though. Um, they don't seem to think that much about them right now but it's a treasure to me and so I'm not doing it for them I'm doing it for me because I just I I don't think that they're going to change their mind and all of a sudden care about this stuff but we will have all the chat books printed out too so you can see I started out printing smaller pictures one for each day but that was a lot more work, so, you know, I went into printing just however many for the week that I wanted to print, and whether that was some bigger ones or smaller ones, whatever it ended up being, ended up being okay with me. So some weeks have more pictures and some have less. So I was just going to rip out the last six months of this journal, but then I decided I would just kind of use it to write down some favorite things from the day, things that I'm grateful for, gratitudes, things that made me happy that day. And so take away the element of having to record the events of the day and print a picture and just write down something good from the day instead of ripping out all these pages. And so that's what I've been doing. This week got skipped somehow. That's okay. And then I've been recording just those grateful events from the day. And that will be the last six months of this. So a full 12 months was done photo journaling in here. And I am glad I finished it. And I also put like, you know, theater tickets when we went to see the Nutcracker, or Star Wars movie tickets. So it's kind of a fun little photo scrapbook. And I will link those videos down below if you want to know how I did this. This is the Erin Condren Horizontal Neutral. And I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I just did a plain quote on the front, a quote from my favorite hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And I did that because it's more of a family journal and I have boys and I didn't want to make it look too girly. So that is my Erin Condren photo journal. It is the 12 months is done, like I said, and I am going to try to finish out the year with my little grateful gratitude notes in there. I want to throw in my Hobonichi because I started out the year journaling in this. And so if you go back and watch quarter one, and maybe quarter two, I talked about this. So I started out the year journaling normally in the daily pages in this Hobonichi, but that got to be a bit much with all my journaling. I used it for some daily planning because I really wanted to try to make this book work for me. Um, I just, I didn't love this book for my daily planning. So that's what it comes down to. Then for a while I wrote just something big that happened for the day, really big picked a color per month that didn't last very long then I just started using it for putting in the Mary Ingle Bright page a day pictures that I loved and putting in the happier by Gretchen Rubin page a day picture um, little quotes and stories and things in here that I love so I thought put my favorite ones in here and they would be kept I'm just using using the little double-sided tape roller for that but then I kind of stopped that. The book started getting really thick. And I just, I don't know, I didn't feel the need to do it anymore. So I'm not filling in the daily pages. But I have been using the weekly pages, not as a journal. But I've been actually using it up on my dresser in my room 
as just kind of like I write the main events of the week out. And so while I'm up there, my main weekly planner is downstairs on my desk in the kitchen. And this is just kind of like a check-in at night, only of like the main weekly events. So I can like check in at night and be like, oh yeah, okay, that's tomorrow, that's tomorrow. Of course, the big main events are on my phone also, but things like having my son mow the lawn or me doing my roots are not entered in my phone because those are not big timed events. But those are big things that need to happen on that day. And so this is just kind of like my guiding light up in my bedroom. I do have a full video on this Hobonichi cousin. And I also have a full video on this amazing cover from a one star leather, which I absolutely love and just make this book feel like, oh, it makes it amazing. It really makes me just wish that I could just plan in a Hobonichi but I love my Erin Condren way too much. But A Hobonichi Cousin is an amazing book and this one star leather cover makes it even more amazing. So I brought this into my journaling video not because I'm journaling anymore in it, but because I was and I wanted to show you how it ended up. It ended up right now as just a weekly planner upstairs on my dresser. Now the very last thing which I just added in is my Katie Daisy New um, it's a 2018, 2019, 17 month weekly planner. And what this planner looks like is it's a horizontal spread. I have a full video on this and I will try to remember to link that down below for you guys too. It's a horizontal spread and it's beautiful. I, I take you all the way through it in my video review if you want to see it. It's available on Amazon and on the Katie Daisy site. And it is the most beautiful planner I've ever seen, to be honest. And her nature artwork flows with the seasons. And I wasn't going to do anything, any more journaling, because you guys know I'm doing enough. But this is a 17-month planner. And so when the year comes up, I'm not going to be doing my gratitudes in the Erin Condren anymore. And I thought, well, I will just wait to start this as a gratitude journal till January. But it's just too pretty. So I started writing my gratitudes in here right now. And we will see if that keeps up since I'm kind of doubling over gratitudes in there in Condren and in here until January of 2019. But we'll see if I keep them up in both. But this will definitely be my gratitude journal for 2019. It's just beautiful, you guys. And if you're interested in this, I highly recommend watching the video and then checking it out on Amazon because it's always like under $15 and it's the most beautiful artwork you will ever get for that price. Okay guys, that wraps up my journaling for right now. Thanks for staying with me and happy journaling. We'll see you next time.